Hi guys, my name is Laura and today I have my quick and easy powder foundation routine or tutorial for you guys. So I'm just going to get straight into it. I've been using powder foundation for a very, very long time. Powder foundation was the first type of foundation that I would use on a daily basis um, just because it was so quick and so easy at the time. I think I was in my first year of uni, so that was 2012. I started using it just to kind of even out my skin tone just a little bit because I hated how my chest was always darker than my face um, and I wanted to even it out even before I started fake tanning. Your face is always going to be a little bit lighter than your body. So that's why I started using powder foundation in the first place and I've loved it ever since. It's very quick, it's very simple and it's really easy and I hope that I can pass on a few tips and tricks to you guys. Um, so I guess I'll start off with just how I apply all these things to my face. So I always start off with a good moisturizer. Today I use the Embryolisse the Cream Concentrate Moisturizer. This is a very, very hydrating, very, very nourishing moisturizer. Um, I do think it's one to invest in if you are looking for a very, very good moisturizer that doesn't cost the earth. Like it's not cheap by any means, like this is around $40, but it's nothing like La Mer where you're paying for $500. Or if you want another one that I would personally recommend, this is the Johnson's Face Care Daily Essential Nourishing 24 Hour Face Cream with SPF 15. The reason why I think it's important to moisturize the skin is, think about it this way, if you didn't moisturize your skin, your skin doesn't have any moisture barrier, obviously, because you don't have any moisturizer on. And then you're gonna put a drying product over the top of that. So it's gonna make your skin look dry. Now, even if you have oily skin, it's still not a good look because if your skin is too dry, it's going to produce more oil. So you always want to moisturize your skin. If you have dry skin, you I feel like you would need a more hydrating moisturizer. If you have more oily skin, maybe just lean towards a more nourishing moisturizer because a lot of the times if your skin is generating oils it might not be because your face is just oily it might be because your skin is dehydrated and your skin is trying to moisturize itself second step is primer so i personally think that this step isn't as crucial as moisturizing but i still think it makes a difference in the longevity and the appearance of your overall makeup I am going to be going in with the Bourjois Happy Light Luminous Serum. Um, this one is from the drugstore. It's relatively affordable. You can get it from ASOS. If you don't have access to Bourjois in like your local chemist or price line or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm using the Luminous one. They also have a matte one, which is also really nice. So I'm just going to apply that to my skin. Okay, so I'm going to move on to concealing now. If you have blemishes that you want to conceal, this is the time to do it or imperfections that you want to conceal. So I'm going to be concealing my under eye dark circles because I want to and I can. And then I'm also going to be covering up a few of my blemishes. I'm not going to do them all only because they don't phase me that much, but I do like to cover up a little bit just so they don't look as intense. <laughs> okay, so now that concealer's done, if you like to cream highlight or you like to cream contour, this is when I would do it only because I don't feel like it is the best to apply a cream over a powder. That's my personal opinion, but you can do yourself however you please. But I'm just going to put on a tiny little bit of Benefit What's Up on just my high points on my face. You could also use a super, super, super luminous powder a powder primer if you really wanted to as well um, I'm just doing this because I did choose although it's luminous it still does keep my face relatively matte that primer from bourgeois um, so yeah that's why I'm just going in with this product now just to kind of give my skin a little bit of kind of depth or not really depth like a luminosity to the skin because sometimes the powder can look a little bit dry now we can actually move on to the actual powder foundation. Again, all those steps are really optional to each their own. Just kind of pick and choose what you think suits you the best. And I completely forgot to conceal my under eyes. Hold on. Okay, now my under eyes are actually concealed. That was so embarrassing. <laughs> I bet you're sitting there for a second going, Laura, why did you not conceal your dark circles when you said you did? Or you were going to? <laughs> oh well. 
Okay, moving into the actual powder foundation. It is from MAC and it is the MAC Studio Fix. I was going to say fluid. No, Studio Fix powder. Um, I love this stuff. This stuff, I honestly own three containers of it. It is so, so good. I own NC35. I own N3. And I also own NC30. Today, I think I'm going to be using... NC35, but I'll see how I go. I'm probably going to be one of the two, NC30 or NC35. Um, just a little bit of background for me and this foundation. I've been using this foundation for about... I purchased my first one in 2012, and it has lasted me... It lasted me a long, long time. Like, it didn't just last me, like, a few months. It definitely lasted me a long time, like, using it almost every single day. So, yeah. I would highly recommend this powder. There's heaps of product in the physical compact itself. There's 15 grams. So that's how I can justify the price is because they do last a very, very long time. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the brushes that you can use with the foundation. Obviously, you can use any brush you want, but this is just my personal recommendations. Um, the first one, and this is the brush that I'll be using today, this is the Tarte Kabuki brush. Um, this is kind of like a hybrid of the two brushes that I'm going to talk about next. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be using this one today. I really enjoy this one. You could use a powder brush. This one's from Models Prefer, and it's just their small powder brush. I actually have two of these. This one's actually really, really rank looking, so I won't let you look at that. But I've actually got two of these. They're divine. Or you can use a brush like this one. This one is from Real Techniques, and it is their buffing brush. This one will let you really buff the product into the skin without too much movement at all of the bristles. This one is kind of like a hybrid of a powder brush and a buffing brush. So that's what we're using today. And also the size of it's just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take NC35 Max Studio Fix Powder and I'm going to start applying that to my face. You don't want to swirl your brush into this product or else you'll end up with way too much in one pack place and you do not want that you want an even distribution so what I do is I just kind of like tap my brush into it a few times and then it picks up quite a little bit of product you can see that there and then what I do is I basically just start tapping it onto my face and then I'll start swirling you'll kind of see what I'm doing it's just so fast guys like I can't even explain it to you also, I forgot to mention, I'm not going to be setting underneath my eyes, only because I do prefer to go in with a lighter setting powder. Um, but if you want to go underneath your eyes and set that concealer with your foundation powder, go right ahead. So that was just one very quick layer. And you can see how much more even my skin tone is now. Um, and also, with powder foundation, it's a little bit more forgiving if you get a slightly wrong shade. Um, you might have noticed before that it was really, really dark on my face. So I just brought the powder down the tiniest bit, and now it's blended in perfectly because I've just dusted a little bit of powder. Um, it's a lot more forgiving than if you were to drag liquid foundation all the way down to your, like, wherever your shirt stops. Um, I really should have used NC30, but I thought that it would work, but it didn't, whatever. So that's just one quick layer of the powder foundation. I am going to quickly set my under eyes before I get any more creasing, and then I'll be right back. Hold on. So if you like to set your under eyes using a different type of powder, that's when you would do this now. I'm just going to be using a little bit of MAC Emphasize Pro Powder. That's this one here. I'm just going to mix it in with a little bit of light swept as well just to dull down the color a little bit just because emphasizes a little bit bright for an everyday look um sometimes for me <laughs> so i personally don't mind the coverage that it is at the moment and the good thing about this is if you just if you are happy with it now and then you start losing coverage in certain areas when you're out and about in the world or wherever you may be you can always just chuck this in your handbag there's a sponge in the bottom, so you can always just touch up, or you could just bring the brush with you as well. It's not that much of an inconvenience, and you can just touch up so easy. You're not messing up with, you're not messing with like liquids, you need any surface to put it on, dirtying your hand from putting foundation on there. It's just so much easier. If you do, however, want more coverage, I will show you just because I have a tiny bit of redness showing here. I don't know if you can even see it because it's really covered quite well. But if you did have some more that you wanted to cover, tap your brush in. Don't do too much this time because you've already got quite a lot of powder. And then just tap it over the area that you think you need it. All you do is tap it. Don't go buffing it because you'll buff away the other product that's already on your face. Just tap it into the skin. And tapping it will just make it blend in very, very seamlessly. 
without too much effort at all. So you can leave it at here and that's when you could do your bronzing or your highlighting with powder products and stuff like that. So I am going to do that now. Also, I forgot to mention, you can still see the glow that that Benefit What's Up gives through the foundation, which is really, really beautiful, but I am still going to go over it with a little bit of highlight. Also, a bonus to powder foundation is it's slightly more forgiving if your powder that you're using on top of it, say, for say, your bronzer or whatever, it's not very blendable. You can always just tap the tiniest bit of product and then just kind of tap away at the edges just to kind of feather it out and kind of blend it a little bit more. So that's what I'll do to get my powder foundation onto my face. If you want it to last a little bit longer or if you feel like it's just looking a little bit powdery, personally, I don't think mine looks too powdery and I'll be happy to walk out of the house like this. But if you do feel like it's looking a little bit powdery or you want it to last that little bit longer, I would recommend you use Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray or some other form of setting spray. Um, I do quite like Fix Plus to kind of just melt the, the powder foundation into the skin. That's really, really beautiful. Or the Mario Badescu um, Facial Spray as well. That's really, really good. But for today, I'm going to be using the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Again, this step is completely optional, but I think that it is quite beneficial to the longevity of your powder foundation, especially if you're going to like an event. Like I know, sorry, I just cut out. I'm not too sure where it stopped, but I know a lot of people, they like wearing powder foundation to like festivals or like day events just because it's less fuss and it doesn't look as caked on as some liquid foundations can look. So yeah, that's why I think a setting spray like this one would be a good choice. To finish off the look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do the rest of my makeup and then you can see what it all looks like when it's all together. So I will be back. <laughs> okay guys, so I'm back. I've finally finished doing my, like the rest of my makeup, my eyebrows, my eyeshadow, my lipstick, finished it all. This is what it all looks like now with my powder foundation on. I personally love powder foundation for the fact that it's so quick, fast, easy and simple. Like, if I wasn't explaining it to you guys, I could probably get all of that done in probably about two, three minutes, when opposed to if I'm using a liquid foundation, it can probably take me 10 minutes or more just to do all those steps. So I love using powder foundation. It's something that I reach for on a daily basis. I love it so much. It gets me, like, it gets me to a point where I look presentable, but I don't look caked on with makeup. I love it so much. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Definitely give me some feedback down below as to how I can improve my videos or what you want to see from me next. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.